Hello and welcome to the voice of Todd. I'm Tom and with this video we're going to talk about The Expanse Season 5 Episode 4 Ragabela which I think is a place in, in Iraq or around Iraq. I did a little bit of quick research. Um, sounds like there was a battle there but uh, anyway be, be <laughs> a bit history for you. Um, before we get into this episode, um, I just want to take a moment to say if you do enjoy these videos, if you've enjoyed anything on my channel, please do subscribe, it really does help. Um, I'm fairly new to this, um, but seeing the numbers picking up like they have been is, is a real big hit. Um, and it's great that, that so many of you want to watch this stuff, so thank you. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, you don't have to, it's it's pure choice, um, but thank you for watching anyway. But let's talk about the reason that you're here. Uh, season 5 of The Expanse is something that I never thought that we would see. It's a TV, and I use the term lightly, it's not... It's not really TV, it's streaming, but the idea is the same, it's small screen entertainment. But it just keeps getting better and better with every episode. And we get to season, f to episode 4, and it just gets better. What an episode. There will be spoilers in this going forward. If you haven't seen this week's episode, do go check it out right now because, for one, everybody should be watching this. And two, it should be the first thing you do in the morning. Straight away, get to it. I. Not everybody can do that, and I get that. So after you've watched it, feel free to come back. I'm not going to go anywhere, it's fine. Um, anybody that's still here, great, let's get into it. I'm going to do the quick recap. I say quick recap, it's never quick, but you guys know that by now. Um, we open up with Alex and Bobby, they're on their little traitor hunt, I guess. Uh, they are following the MCRN fleet on the supply run that was mentioned, episode 2 and 3. As an emergency broadcast comes through the comm on the Razorback from the UN issuing a hold on all traffic to Earth except relief aid and we hear of an attack on the MCR Parliament on Mars 2. We then jump over to Earth and we're at the UN Penitentiary in the Chesapeake Conservation Conservancy Conservancy? zone. We'll go with it. Um, Amos is visiting an old friend. Uh, I thought that we would be getting more Amos this episode. We don't and that just means we'll be getting more of him in the season. But he's there at this, this prison facility. It's an underground facility for inmates with body mods and that old friend he's visiting it's only Clarissa bloody Mao. Season 3, wasn't she? Was she season 3? Um, Amos is, is... He's on a journey this season. He's lost someone, one of the very few people that he cared about. And he wants to leave a little bit of good in the world instead of just shooting his way through life, I think. This whole sequence in the books, all the Amos stuff in this book, it's the reason I love Amos, or the, one of the biggest reasons why I love Amos. It's so good, and I can't wait to see it played out, and these little breadcrumbs that we're getting right now is just, oh, I want it all. Um, I can't wait to see how it plays out, I really can't. Um, but while Amos is visiting Clarissa, um, or Peaches, as we will call her from now on, I guess, a emergency alarm sounds and the prison goes into lockdown as the walls start to crack. Over to Luna, 
and Abasarala is trying to get the Watchtower satellites repositioned again away from Mars and on towards the what they think is the trajectory of this, this broken asteroid. Uh, Delgado, our good friend Delgado, comes in and enters her office and shows her news footage of a second rock hitting Earth. This one hits mainland US, near Philadelphia it's specified. I think every scene with Abbasarala this episode, the panic is just kicking in more and more and more. She seems to just be running on adrenaline at this point. They try and reach Secretary Gao or their contacts in uh, Secretary Gao's um, entourage. Nobody's going to talk to them. They're just blacklisted. Um, so Abbasarala has a quick think. They get a work around and they get a message to Gao. During the conversation, Rock 3 hits. I think this one's near Asia. And UN1 and its escort goes down with the shockwave. This episode is going from bad to worse and we're, what, 10 minutes in? Ah, this is so good. We then jump over to the belt and Tycho Station as Johnson and Holden are ready to spring their trap. Bull and a small group of uh, security guards are in the uh, the freight container ready for the Zemea to pick up and as the Zemea shows up the shit really hits the fan. Zemea opens fire on Tycho Station, the first missile hitting the docks. Bull did get out in time that's the main thing um, but everybody by now knows very quick fan favorite Sakai well she has a little boomer moment and Johnson is down she makes her escape and heads over to Johnson's quarters where Monica Stewart is seems pretty much fully recovered now from the last few episodes she's waiting in Johnson's apartment uh, in his quarters as the second missile hits Tycho Station. This one carrying a worker drone. Big droid with cutting arms and looks so cool. Really cool. Johnson uses his remaining energy to tell Holden where the protomolecule is being stored. Yep, that's in his quarters too. So Holden heads over there to secure the protomolecule. Um, luckily, Monica manages to subdue Sakai, but the drone with the protomolecule gets away. I mean, the shit hit the fan when Tycho was attacked, but now the protomolecule's gone. Th uh, three rocks have hit Earth. The stakes in this episode just keep getting raised and raised and raised. This season is so much going on. Back over to Luna and Avasaral is at breaking point. She can't recharge on, uh, but at least Delgado has come through with some good news. Watchtower satellites were repositioned under Gao's, I suppose, final order. Uh, and he leads her to the officer's mess where they watch a fourth rock headed to Earth. But this one, intercepted by the Watchtower satellites, is totally destroyed. We then... Finally, for the, the real sort of final story scene with this episode, we're with Naomi on the Chetsumoka. Uh, Philip, Carol and Sin still have her captive and they're heading towards their destination and the fleet of Marco in Aros. Marco's capital ship is the Pella, which is, a, I think it's an old UN freighter. It's a true warship, like a real warship. And as Naomi comes face to face with Marco, he gives her, joyfully, gives her the details of the attack on Earth. Hasn't been much mention of the attack on Mars, or the belt, or Tycho at this point. Um, but Marco, he takes a leaf out of Holden's book, and he takes center stage, taking credit for the attacks under the banner of the Free Navy. 
We leave this episode with Naomi trapped in her quarters on Marco's warship, stuck in the belly of the beast. Holden and Monica trying to piece everything together while dealing with the loss of Fred Johnson. Alex and Bobby trailing the MCRN as everything starts to fall apart around them. Avisrala and Delgado are facing the task of trying to put the UN and Earth back together. And Amos? He's trapped in an underground prison full of psychos. And currently MIA. Galaxy is on fire because Marco Anaros demands it. And this is only episode 4 of a 10 episode season. It just doesn't stop. It's... Can it be next Wednesday yet? I need episode 5. It's just insane. It's insane. This episode is the best TV I think I've ever seen. I was on the edge of my seat from the end of last week's episode. And this did not stop. It doesn't let up. There's no chance to catch any breath with this episode. It just takes you from bad to worse to worse. It's so tense. I think this is the best episode of TV I've ever seen. The actors were incredible. You really got to see how good they are. And a lot of this is green screen, let's not forget. But... Avasarala in particular has so much emotion. Go- it's just re- it's across her face all the time. So much. The sets, the CGI, I mean, it's always amazing. The thing that stood out to me this episode as well was the music. It just kept the pace of the episode going. It was constantly pushing you along when there wasn't any dialogue. Which, again, just is a wonderfully written show. It just wonderful the fact that there's so many moving pieces and every week they can well we're on week two but every week they can really just raise the stakes and do it right and leave you wanting more everything this week was perfect i i don't know if i can wait another week to see what happens i mean i know i've read the book but this is taking a different this is Parallel to the books, this is a very different take on the core story of book five. Thank God we've got Christmas to provide a slight distraction. This, I've watched it twice in the space of four hours. I can see me watching it a few more times before next week. This is sci-fi at its best best this whole season has been and this episode I don't know how they can do better than this but if anybody can it's the team behind the expanse the show just gets better and better and better when they announced that they were doing this back in 2014 I think it was I had just read the first book I just finished it when they announced that they were making it into a TV show. I didn't expect anything like this and I am so happy to be proven wrong. Is this show, what it is now, is... It's perfection. It's the best thing on TV. And I hope that everybody that watches it is telling all their friends to watch it. And that everybody watches this and we can keep it going for as long as they can write this well. Because this has already blown Game of Thrones way out the water. So you can probably tell that I liked this episode. (laughs) What are we going to do for a week? I know what we can do. Tell me what you thought. What did you think of this episode? Let me know in the comments. Because I really want to talk about it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you all have a great Christmas. And if I don't see you before, I will see you next Wednesday for episode 5. And hopefully we can keep this this excitement and the hype train going because... <sighs> it's 
<laughs> I have no words. I'll see you next time. Mm.